Welcome guys. In this video, we will learn how to implement multiple object tracking using DLAP correlation tracker. If you are new to object tracking, then you can watch my previous video where I have explained briefly what is object tracking in computer vision and why do we need it. Now without wasting any time, let's see how can we use DLAP correlation tracker in Python. But before that, you have to make sure that you have installed the required libraries. So go to the terminal first and first install cmake by writing pip install cmake and once it is installed then you will be able to install dlib library by writing pip install dlib and after this you can install opencv if you haven't yet so you will write pip install opencv contrib python For me, these things are already installed. In case if you are using PyCharm, then there is another way of installation. You can go to the files, settings, and select Python interpreter, and click on the plus icon. And search for CMake, and then install it by clicking here. Then you can install DLib. And in the same way, you can install OpenCV library as well. Once we have installed all of these libraries in our system, then we are good to go. Now I will create a new Python file. And inside it, first of all, I will import OpenCV module and then DLib module. Now I need to load a video file in which I will track the objects. So for that, I have this video file and here we are going to track these horse riders. If you want to use the same video file, then you can find it on the link given in the description below. Now let's come back to the Python file and here to load the video, I will create an object of video capture class and as an argument, I will provide the name of the video file. Now I will use the while loop to access the frame from my video one by one. So I will write success comma frame equals to cap dot read. And then I will check if I get the frame or not. So I will use an if statement to check and in case if I do not get the frame then I will simply break the loop otherwise I can display the frame on my screen so I will write cv2 dot I'm show and this will take two argument the first one is the name of the window you can give any name you want and the second argument is the frame and after this I will give some waiting time so I will use wait key function and let's give the waiting time of 30 milliseconds and at the end I will release the capture object and then I will destroy the window. So I will write cv2 dot destroy all windows. Now let's run the code and see if it is working. Okay, it is working, but the frames are too big, so we need to resize them. So here I will write frame equals to cv2 dot resize, and then I will write their frame and the size of the frame which I want. Let's run the code again. Okay, it's fine now. Now the next step is to track the objects from our video and for that we need to perform the detection first. Just to keep everything simple and easy to understand, I will perform the detection manually but of course you can use the object detector as well if you want. So the procedure for manual detection will be like that. If we want to select any region of interest from our video, then what we will do is that we will press S 
and the video will be paused and then we will select the object using our mouse. So what can I do is that I will store the value of wait key function in a variable and then I will check which key is pressed. So I will use an if statement and then I will check if s is pressed. So in case if the s is pressed then it means that I want to select any object for tracking. So here I will write ROI equals to and then I will write select ROI function and this will take two argument. The first one is the name of the frame which is video because I have provided the name as video here and the second argument is the frame. Now I will assess these ROIs one by one. So here I will write for ROI in ROIs and inside this for loop I will find the top left and bottom right corner of the ROI. So here I will write x1 comma y1 which is the top left corner and then I will write w comma h which is the width and height respectively and then I will write ROI and once I get these values then I can find the bottom right corner of the ROI so here I will write x2 comma y2 and then I will write x1 plus w comma y1 plus h and in this way I will get the bottom right corner of the ROI. After this I can initialize a correlation tracker class from dlib and then I will create a rectangle object for my dlib tracker. So here I will write rect is equals to dlib dot rectangle function and inside it I will provide x1, y1, x2 and y2 and then I will start the tracking. So for this I will write tkr dot start track function and this will take two argument the first one is the rgb frame and the second one is the rectangle object but because we are getting the frames in bgr format so we need to convert them into rgb so here just after resizing the frame i will write rgb frame equals to and then i will use cvt color function from opencv and inside it I will provide frame and then I will specify the conversion type as BGR to RGB and once we get this RGB frame we can provide this inside the start track function and then I will provide rectangle object. Now because we have to track multiple objects so I will create a list of the trackers so here I will write trackers and this will be a list. Now let's come back to the while loop and here I will append the tracker. So I will write trackers dot append and inside it I will provide the tracker. Now if everything is fine then our code should work. So let's run it and see if there is an error. Okay, now to select any object, I will press S and the video will be paused and then I will use the mouse to select the object and then I will press enter and then I will select another object and then again I will press enter and after this once we have done all the selections then I will press escape and the video will be continued again. So the code is working. Now the next step is to keep updating our tracker with the upcoming frames of our video. So for this I will use a for loop just before displaying the frame and I will assess the trackers from the tracker list.
and inside this for loop I will write tracker dot update function and this will take one argument which is the RGB frame and in this way we will keep updating our tracker with the upcoming frames and the tracker will keep finding the objects in the new frames now I will get the location of the track object and for that I will write position equals to tracker dot get position and then I will find the top left and bottom right corner so here I will write x1 equals to position dot left function and then I will write y1 equals to position dot top function and in the similar way I will write x2 equals to position dot right function and y2 equals to position dot bottom function after getting these points I can draw the rectangle around the objects which are being tracked so for that I will use the rectangle function from OpenCV and this will take the frame the top left coordinate and then it will take the bottom right coordinate and then I will specify the color and then the thickness now let's run the code and see if it is working now I will press S to pause the video and then I will select the region of interest and then I will press enter and then I will select another object and again I will press enter and then I will press escape okay I got an error let me see where is the error okay I need to convert these points into integer so I will use in function now let's see if we are still getting any error again I will press S to pass the video and then I will select the object and then I will press enter then I will select another one and again I will press enter and once the selection is done I will press escape and the video will be continued again and now you can see that the selected objects are being tracked you can select more objects if you want in the same way let's select this one and this one now they are also being tracked so this is how we can use the DLIP correlation tracker for tracking the object and it seems to be working very well but of course it has its own limitation for example it will give the false positive in case if the object is gone or disappeared from the video that's all for now thanks for watching this video